do I really want to shift gears and change again? And be stressed well, again. <laughs> literally, everyone writes their essay about lateral mobility. Like, yeah, I can spend two years in dermatology and two years in gastro and two years in cardio. You're not going to want to do that. It's hard. <laughs> hard to keep being the new guy. Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't think I can trade the hospital life for clinic life. <laughs> All I've known is clinic life. You know? I, I don't know. I, I, I've been in both. I've been in family medicine and in the hospital. I, I just gravitate towards the hospital. Every single time. I I don't know. Like I, I have like this aversion to the hospital just because I've never had a good rotation or a good experience at the hospital. But mm -hmm. I just I hear so many people saying they love it because you're like with colleagues, people around your age, you know, people all doing the same stuff, that hundreds of them, all these mm -hmm. employees, and it's like this camaraderie, and you're just like, you know, it's us against them. It's like the hospital staff. So mm -hmm. it, a lot of it does seem very attractive. So I might try it out you know it's just like once you get so comfortable with the outpatient life mm -hmm. it's like i don't know you just don't want to change I, it, it it was my experience as a scribe in family medicine i think that's why i don't know if it would be different as a provider i'm pretty sure it'd be different but mm -hmm. that was just my experience from uh like the er versus like family med yeah i don't know i don't know my answer to everything is i don't know i'd really like to try it out but it's also like once you already know like a certain thing, that's just like, that's the thing with switching specialties in PA as a PA is mm -hmm. like everyone writes their essay about lateral mobility. Like, yeah, I can spend two years in dermatology and two years in gastro and two years in cardio. You're not going to want to do that. It's hard, <laughs> hard to keep being the new guy. Like even after a year or two of experience doing like outpatient medicine, first internal medicine, primary care, and now urgent care, which is like a lot of the same. And then a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just so comfortable now, like even as a guy with only two years experience and only one year in urgent care, less than that even, it's just like, there's so much stuff that's just autopilot. It's just so comfortable. It's like sl swimming in like a shallow, warm pool instead of like <laughs> the rapids. It's uh -huh. like, do I really want to shift gears and change again? And, and be stressed all, again? <laughs> literally. And like, I know all the, out, all these outpatient medications, I know how they present, I know how they interact. I know how they make people feel. Now I have to learn all this stuff that's like injected and drip versus push. And like, I don't know any of this crap. <laughs> I don't want to, but like, I kind of do. It's just, <laughs> it's a huge struggle to have to make big changes. I guess it's just nice knowing that you have that option as a PA. Yeah. You always have the option, but realistically, are you going to want to? Yeah. Do most people do that? I don't think oh. so. I don't think so. Almost yeah. no one does. Almost no one. I mean, I've seen it. Like, for instance, one professor I had in PA school who was doing our um, this like modular learning we think we did where we had a lot of visiting professors who were like kind of part time. She was a gynecology PA. She she worked women's medicine, and she mm -hmm. worked for like the last ten years. And here I am as like a PA student thinking like, wait, someone spends ten years in the same specialty? That doesn't make any sense. What PA would do that? And then the more experience you get, the more PAs you meet, you're like, oh, wait, no, they all do that. They all do that. <laughs> That's just your life because you know so much about it. It's comfortable. Now you don't have to stress so much about your job. It's just coming in and doing mostly the same stuff, talking to the same people. It's just, it's comfortable mm -hmm. instead of just constantly reinventing the damn wheel. I always told, like, I use that in my personal statement. I, I, Everyone I feel does. like you called me out there. You're, let's say, like, Everyone does. the lateral <laughs> mobility thing. I use that in my personal statement. Uh, and not now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm actually only geared towards one thing. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it's funny because like a lot of people who just like fell in love with the PA profession on paper, they're like, what? A hundred K in two years? That's cool. And then they just like backwards rationalize why they want to do it besides just the lifestyle and the salary. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh, this is unique about the profession. I'm going to latch on to lateral mobility. But then like the people who seem to be honest are the ones that are like, no, I had this great experience with neuro or whatever and they're like no i just really want to practice neuro as a pa i, I love everything about that job those are the people i believe mm -hmm. you know lateral mobility is cool in pers in like theory but very few people actually take like a lot of advantage of it i think i i had one of my uh, my professors or one of the alumni from my program i think did that she worked in the hospital like a uh, critical care mm -hmm. and then try to go into um plastics 
got an awesome job in plastic. That's paid so cool. well. Yeah. But then I think after a month, like she went back right back to the hospital because she's like, so hard. I'm so out of my element. <laughs> but the thing is, if she stuck with it for like two years, she'd have a new element. Oh, yep, yeah, that's true. But that's that's a hard two years. Yeah, just to like adapt and like you said, be the new guy again. I I I, I can see why it'd be difficult. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking. Like, man, I don't know. It's a tough choice because like I know for a dang fact, I'm not interested in primary care right now. I hate all the paperwork. <laughs> I don't like having to Fair worry off. about someone twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like the whole shift work. I don't like the nine to five. Like, I, so I get so many different like job offers and like little job like listings and whatnot, at least in my email. And when I see like eight to four, nine to five, I just immediately shudder. I'm like, no, I, I can't do that again. I can't do five <laughs> days a week. I love three days a week. It's just so nice. Uh, so like, first off, you're spoiled with like a certain schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's just, I'm not going to go into why I don't want to do primary care anymore. But, <laughs> But the point is, like, I'm so comfortable with this urgent care thing. And I know I can, I'm like I'm only kind of focusing on urgent care and maybe ER jobs if I ever move. Mm -hmm. But then, like, all this other stuff comes up and it will be like, it would be so cool to do, like, uh, like plastics. You mentioned plastics, plastic mm -hmm. surgery or dermatology. Or I'm even looking at, like, uh, injections. Like, cosmetics are getting really big now. Oh, yeah. We always need, like, providers, like, lip fillers and Botox. And it's getting so popular. And it's cash. So it's just, it's a really cool, like little subset of medicine to get into. And I'm thinking like, that would be kind of cool to do. But like, if you mm -hmm. really want to get good at it, you got to do it full time for a while. Oh yeah. That has to be like your specialty basically yeah. Yeah. at that point. That full time, then you forget all this other stuff. And then you go back to real medicine and you're like, I don't know anything. <laughs> so I don't Which know. is what I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of that happening to me. Cause I, I know right now I'm a sponge and I'm going to sponge everything through yeah. PA school. Mm -hmm. But then once you really like, go broad, mm -hmm. sponge everything up and then narrow down. Like how much do you really retain from like all the other stuff to where you actually keep it at the end? You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. But at the same time, it also gets way easier to learn something else, mm -hmm. you know, because human bodies are human bodies. So like, for instance, when I was working in gastroenterology as a medical assistant, we had a girl, Amy, uh, who's a nurse practitioner who spent like 10 years in cardiology. And then mm -hmm. she's like, no, like this particular practice pays very well and they pay you per hour. And for whatever reason, she just really liked the practice. So she switched to gastro. And, you mm -hmm. know, the, like the learning curve was big. She only started seeing like six people a day. And then she ramped up to like 10 people a day. And, you know, after a year or so, she got, you know, she was keeping up with a lot of the other PAs, 12, 15, 20 a day. But mm -hmm. it, was, it was very stressful for her. But she like, whatever reason, just really liked the lifestyle. She liked the company. And she's like, it's worth, you know six months or a year of a sharp, a, sheep, a, a steep, sharp learning curve to like get this lifestyle that I want, mm -hmm. you know? So like you learn things quicker than like a new grad as someone with oh, a yeah. grad, even in a different field, you know? And you, you still get paid well, isn't that? Yeah. that mm -hmm. yeah. You're, you're getting paid. Like it's all, it's, it seems stressful to someone who's like been in a cushy PA job to like, be slightly less cushy for a while. But like mm -hmm. as a new grad, you're like, dude, that's that's still easy compared to what I'm freaking dealing with here. <laughs> so it's just, you get spoiled. I guess my mm -hmm. point is you get spoiled and you don't want to do lateral mobility anymore. <laughs> I want to be spoiled already. Yeah. I know it's like, well, do you though? Because then like the world is, is not your oyster anymore. Now it's like this tiny little part of the world that you're just operating in. Oh man, I've been waiting to do trauma since I left my last job and I can't stop thinking about it. I look, I like kind of go a little bit above and beyond and I like watch videos on like chest tube placements mm -hmm. and like uh, throwing art lines in. And I'm just like, even like trying to re-familiarize myself with like the material that I used to grab for the PAs, like yeah. things like that, like just like knowing like what you need in a kit for like a chest tube. Right. I think it's like things that'll help me in rotation. So I'm still trying to keep up on that aspect on top of the semester that's going on. So, oh man, I mean, whatever you need it, it'll snap back quick. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. If I use it, I lose it. Like literally, if you need it for a week, you're going to know it. I hope I remember it. <laughs> you, no, you literally will. And if you don't, it's going to be very easy to relearn. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like, one of my professors in PA school called it the lattice. It's like the like the bone structure of your knowledge. 
Mm -hmm. And when you're like a new like PA student, you don't have anything. And then you learn a few like different diseases and treatments and you're like, okay, there's a little bit. And then you learn something else that's kind of similar. So it builds on top of that. And here you learn mm -hmm. something similar to this and it builds on top of that. And so the more experience and knowledge you get, the more things are just easy to just place on the shelf instead of building the shelf. Right. right? So like if you just want to put in that little bit of effort, changing fields isn't going to be nearly as hard for someone with experience as opposed to like a new grad who doesn't know, you know, very much. I feel like that mentality rings true even mm -hmm. in my first semester. I feel like at the beginning, it was so hard to learn. And then now, like towards the end, I was like, oh, okay, these classes are kind of building up on each other. It's Literally. all kind of tying together. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like it gets harder. School gets harder as you go along because the question, at least my program, the time they give you per question went from two minutes to 90 seconds to uh, like a minute 15 to a minute, just like it is on the pants. So like mm -hmm. the time per question went down. So it was harder to take the exams. The material and the complexity went up, but everyone's grades went up and it seemed like it was getting easier because you're just used to it. Right. You know, you just, just get used to the abuse. <laughs> used to the abuse is one thing. Uh, that's definitely true, but also just used to learning really fast and just used to just learning medicine. It's just, it's not new for you anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just like, okay, I need to learn this much of the physiology for this to make sense. I don't have to learn all of it. And then I have to know like three or four common presentations slash emergency, like life-threatening presentations and just a couple of treatments and the main side effects, the end. Mm -hmm. and, like that's what you focus on. And you like, just don't think about everything else on the slides. Right. And you realize, okay, this is all I really need to know. So it's like you get more surgical and less, you, you use a sniper rifle rather than a grenade. Right. <laughs> a lot, more it's, it takes more skill, but it's way less energy to pull the trigger one time and hit like a one inch thing, as opposed to just like, ah, let's hit, kill everybody. Let's figure it out. Uh, like it's way less stressful, way less chaotic. You're just like, no, this is what I need to do. The end. Mm -hmm. So at, even as a student, yeah, you just get more specialized. And I don't know why I just like brought in a freaking war metaphor, but no, the, the analogy made sense. I, I got it. <laughs> I yeah, love I war it. movies, so I, I got it. There you go. I'm just not trying to trigger everybody, but yeah. yeah it, it's it's funny when there's like like a, a, a veteran or whatever in medicine because there's so opposite fields. You know, taking lives versus saving lives. It's just so mm -hmm. a dichotomy. It's so weird when that happens. Patrick is actually a I think active duty right now. He um what? What do you mean he's active duty? Well, not not active. I think reserves. Sorry, I think he's in reserves right now. The guy, uh, my 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 close friend in PA school, the one with study methods that I talked told you about. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's in the reserves. He wow. crazy thing. This guy's amazing. Not only did he almost get like straight A's, um, but he, uh, works a six figure salary. So I forgot what he does. Now? I, yeah, yeah. Like he like. What? He, he does something on the side and it's like a salary job and like he's still like earning six figures and work and he's working and doing PA school. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this guy's like, wait, he's still working full time. I, I, I wouldn't say it's full time. Like he's working and he's getting the job done, but it's like salary pay. What? what is I don't know. Doing? I I don't know what he does. I have to ask him again. Get him on the podcast, dude. <laughs> I'll ask him. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, he doesn't have to. Obviously, if he's not like camera shy or he doesn't want to talk about his life, like not everyone wants to broadcast everything, you know, like me and Elijah do. But also, I think it helps people just people mm -hmm. going through stuff that you want to go through. But yeah, not everybody wants to be on this. I'll, I'll actually yeah. ask him about it because he, he, he's he been more interested in like, I think, doing things like this. Oh, yeah. There's dude, it's shocking how many more like PA influencers and like people helping people get in and stuff there are. Mm -hmm. It's like when I was going through, there was like six. Maybe there wasn't not, a lot. Yeah, not many. There was like, and a lot of them stopped. Like most of them quit. Uh, but now there's so many, so so many. Oh yeah, the views are kind of like spread amongst all of them now. Yeah, like there's not like one that's just, you know, um, but yeah, it's just amazing how many people there are. The the Mexican PA, I forgot his his name, but me and him are working on a collab. Uh, hopefully, sometime in the next couple months. But like he just came out of nowhere and he's like climbing real quick. And then I saw he's posting that he's like advising people and they're getting in. And it's like, wait a minute, this looks familiar. I'm doing the same thing. So there's just so many options right now for people to get help. 
Yeah, I've watched a couple of his videos. I um uh because he's uh from <laughs> his school is in the same state I used to live in. It's in yeah, California. Okay. I think he goes to um Cal State something. <laughs> oh no no no, you see something? I'm not sure. I forgot which one it was, but he goes to a university out there. Mm -hmm. I think he just graduated. 